Here is my nice setup. Awful dark. Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. We finally are putting our brand new trailer hitch to use with a 1500 mile trip. And to say it was eventful is an understatement, but what better way to test that guy out than tossing it to the wolves. Sasha and I are in for a trip. So we are all loaded up. Here goes nothing. The co-pilot has her little spot all cozied up. So Sasha actually does really good on road trips. Just chills out. She's done a 24 hour straight one before. This might turn into more. First stop in, we let Sasha walk around so she can heat stroke out. And we flipped her to the back seat so she can sprawl. I'm not sure the last time I saw above 15 on this thing. Even better. Shh. She's taking a nap. She found herself a comfy spot. Killer 4 is hungry. Sasha's also hungry. Just hand calculated that first stint. Looks like the computer was a tad optimistic. We're at 13.74. But we also have a larger tire, so probably 15-ish. Well, I guess we gotta add a little excitement to everything around here. All right, so we just hit into Ohio and it does actually have a charging issue. We're at 11.2 volts. Not showing up on the dash now, but it's definitely not charging. Oh, that's fantastic. We're a little over 200 miles away from where we need to be, but at least we're in civilization. So I'm gonna try beating on it, see if we can get it to come back to life. All right, so we are currently trying to head to a Walmart and see if we can grab a battery to see if we can get somewhere where I can do something. We're at 10.6 volts, 14 miles away. All right, we are 1.5 miles away from the exit, getting all sorts of warnings. Hopefully we can make it. We're close enough to almost being able to coast. And now we have a dead cluster. And there is Walmart. Here is my nice setup. Awful dark. Sasha is not real happy, I don't think. Well, now that's exciting. Um, we made it here. Walmart's there. Uh, I got 30 minutes to spare before they close. I'm going to at least go grab a battery. Maybe a charger. I want to see if I... I wonder if I can find an outlet, charge this battery, try and do something. I'm about 200-ish miles away, so I don't know. If we get there, it'll be useful. We have a solution to our problem if we can just get there. I swear to God, I can't make my life up sometimes, but grabbed ourselves a battery in the old Walmart. We also grabbed a charger and just talked to the nice people inside there, and we are going to hang out by the pop machines up front charge up both batteries but first I need to swap that battery in so I can drive up there so we moved a little closer to the front we're right there Sasha's having a little midnight snack I guess we just sit here and chill out for a couple hours if you look right back there you can see the yellow thing right there that is my sneaky pete new charger charging up the original battery we're almost at 25 percent sasha found the resting spot so not exactly the original plan but i think we have a plan nonetheless we'll get both of these up to a full charge and i guess see how efficient the lr4 is in electric mode are these the pains you have to go through when you have a tesla finding random walmart outlets so you can get going again ah she's still laying down tucked the battery further behind there took a little nap we are five and a half hours into charging that one i believe it is about as good as it's going to get before we take off and attempt this journey i'm going to pop the new battery we just bought off. Put that on the charger for a few minutes and top that off. Give us the best shot we got. So here goes nothing. See how far we get. We're gonna leave everything off that we can. So quick update, we made it 85 miles on the first battery. That's the original one that's bigger than the other one. So we probably won't make 85 on the next one. But the good news is, as you can see, it is light out. 
so we can run this battery without headlights so maybe that'll help um got another walmart 30 miles down the road that's what i'm gonna shoot for first so yeah not exactly what I thought I'd be doing this morning. Sasha's still sleeping. She's got it rough. One thing I do find funny is I never realized how few outlets are outside of gas stations. Like none. So we're continuing battery rodeo. This time, pulled both of them out. We're at a Walmart in Kentucky. I went in asking for an outlet to borrow and the gentleman in the automotive center, they were nice enough just to stick them on the big charger. We should be able to get moving quicker. Sasha's over here eating breakfast. You saw I was pulling into a Bucky's right before this and I asked them if they had an outlet I could borrow and they pretty much told me to pound sand. So far, everyone at Walmart's been great and very helpful. Could always be worse. And we're back in action. See how far we make it this time. I don't know what you guys were worried about. We made it just fine, even on the original battery. Starting to get good at working on these things. Not by choice. And right there you can see why I wasn't too terribly concerned about the alternator itself being out. Just that we had to get here. Can you guess what we're picking up? What year is this one? 10. 10, okay. One year older than that one, okay. Yep. <laughs> Basically perfect fit on that alternator. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> now that is pretty comical that you were talking about throwing the hitch on and having the trailer brake wired and then all of a sudden, oh, it's got a new alternator too. Need everything off this. The trailer's too big for this, though. We usually run around with my brother's got a 2500 Ram power wagon. Yeah. And we pick up most of the stuff with that, but he's got a 20 foot, 10,000 pound trailer, but the trailer's like three some thousand pounds, so you'd be way over by the time you yeah. throw 5,500 pounds on it. There's a difference between what it'll do and what you're really supposed, supposed to, be. to do. Yeah. Well, that's what, um, so I'm like, that's where I figured on the U Haul trailer. I'm like, I'll just one way one. It's $240. Yeah. Um, to bring it back to Dubuque and drop it off in Dubuque. So what have I always said about owning a Land Rover? That it's always good to have spare Land Rovers around in case your Land Rover breaks. I'm going to add one new caveat to that rule is when you're going to pick up another vehicle make sure it matches what you're picking it up with like the budget overland lr4 and this one right here now you guys see why i wasn't too worried about the alternator going out on the poor lr4 here because i knew at the end of that last 230 miles we had to travel we had an alternator sitting in this one and we can get the silver one back on the road and at least now we have a shot at getting home still got close to 800 miles so there's plenty of time for stuff to go wrong and speaking of that last 230 miles playing the battery rodeo and hopping between walmarts and switching out those two batteries charging them switching them out again 230 miles took 13 hours the whole trip down to tennessee was supposed to take 10 and that was 700 and 50 miles, 13 for 230. Kind of wore out, let's backtrack a little bit, show us getting this thing loaded up, because that was an ordeal too. 
All right, so this was interesting. Ended up crawling under it and undoing the shift cable manually and just shifting it that way and just using a lever on the side of the transmission to shift it. And on top of that, the parking brake would not release, even with the manual release. It's been sitting for a minute. I was concerned about messing up the grass. They weren't, they insisted on me just pulling it and were not worried about the grass. Felt terrible about that. You can see when I was pulling the alternator, I soaked all my clothes with sweat. Between that and the incredibly long, mentally tasking day, I wasn't quite thinking clearly. Wow. Well, that was smooth. It was 100 some <laughs> degrees and thick. I ended up puking later. Good thing I had a spotter because I pulled a real Joe move on that one and uh, we scratched the front bumper. Being we were on a hill, it kept wanting to slide down off the ramps. So I went on the side here and pulled it back up. Sasha really likes the southern porch lifestyle. This is a do as I say, not as I do moment. And uh, don't jack up something while you're winching it. But we had to get over the bump onto the trailer and it worked. Yeah, there we go. Between swapping the alternators and all the messing around and picking up the U-Haul trailer, I was at their house for seven hours. And is that not a welcome sight to finally be loaded up and on the road? And I do have to say that is a pretty nice looking setup. All right, now that we are successfully loaded up, strapped down, front and rear, we get to test out that hitch we built last week because we snagged a U-Haul trailer to get this guy home. How everything's going so far, this worries me. It normally wouldn't, but we've had a bit of a disaster so far. I'm wore out. Let's get Sasha and I back to the ranch. And one more thing, with that load on it, the LR4 is pretty rowdy sounding. Whatever is under there looks somewhat important. This guy looks like he's gonna get wet too. Oh, you know, just cruising through Illinois. Random tank on the side of the road. Nothing to worry about. And here we got Sasha watching the world pass by. And at every fuel stop, I went ahead and checked the hitch bolts. So just made it back to the ranch. We did 1,500 miles and a lot of other wasted time and Sasha did real good on the trip. But as we got into town, she decided to puke right down in between. That looks like a seed out jobber. Too many roundabouts. And we have successfully made it back to the ranch in one piece. After that ordeal, I am disgusting. Gonna go take a shower, probably sleep. Then you guys get the story on this guy. I just gotta be clean to tell it. So what we're gonna do here, being we got a locked parking brake, is use a tree. We have our LR4 there. We're gonna anchor it there. Yank the trailer out from under it. This whole trip's been spectacular. I don't see how anything could go wrong. I suppose you might wanna stay tuned. I don't see how any of this could go south whatsoever. Let's, uh, we're gonna pull it forward a little bit, make sure the parking brake is still on because my luck would be it decided to finally release on the trip home and it goes tumbling into the trees. Who knows? All right, 
right, so we are traction limited. I'm going to find something to winch to. It's all working out exactly how I planned it. But here is the current situation. We got the winch hooked up to that big oak tree. Hopefully that don't come down. All we need to do is get the rear wheels onto the ground. The front wheels roll and then it'll be gravy to pull this off. So we just got like three and a half, four feet to pull. We'll use the winch to help the LR4 up the hill. Little bit of an all-wheel drive burn out there. So there we made it back and as you see what we went down to Tennessee on our 1500 mile trip was another LR4 and you could say that this is the cheapest LR4 in the country if you want to do that YouTuber clickbait. How do I know it's the cheapest? Well because any cheaper you would have had to pay me to take it. I had a gentleman reach out and William and his family offered this thing affectionately known as Merlin to me for free. How incredible. With the issues it has, it was never gonna bring a ton of money. So he's watched a few videos of ours and he just wanted it to go and be with someone who could put it to good use. And we are gonna do that one way or another. We're gonna get this thing back on the road or we are gonna use it to further educate the Rover community somehow. And as much as I would have liked to have taken it for free, we agreed upon a price, still a great price but I just couldn't accept it for free. And not only did William offer this up for free, when I showed up, he gave me this. How freaking awesome is this gonna look in the office for the ranch? I'm telling you, these two are the salt of the earth type of people. William and his wife do woodworking, and I'm gonna throw links to their stuff down below, and I can't appreciate them enough. And we're gonna make sure old Merlin back here either goes back on the road or gets put to good use in furthering the Rover community somehow. I mean, just look at it. So nice. William and his family were also incredibly great hosts and hung out with Sasha and helped as I used their driveway to fix the budget LR4 and get this thing loaded up. I wasted their whole day. But there is usually a catch to any sort of good deal out there. I'm gonna give you one guess what is wrong with this five liter LR4. That is right, there is the painful estimate they received, and that's when they decided to let Merlin go. I know it's a shocker, but it needs timing chains. But anyways, this video has been long enough so far. Had some unexpected things pop up during the trip, so we will go over what the heck we should do with Merlin back here in the next video. But either way, we still have a 100% intact custom built trailer hitch that towed nearly 8,000 pounds on an 800 mile trip home. And the old budget Land Rover handled it just fine. Sport mode on the transmission and it had plenty of power to do whatever I needed to do. Now I'm gonna go inside real quick and calculate how thirsty it was. May not be as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Just tabulated it all up and we did a combined fuel mileage of 11.78 MPGs. That is flying there empty and towing the 800 miles back with nearly 8,000 pounds, lugging this guy down. Obviously you cannot travel at 80 miles an hour towing to get that, I'm, but I can't say that's terrible. Fairly happy with that. With that being said, I'm happy to be back home and I appreciate all you watching. Appreciate you subscribing. And if you enjoyed it, give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. We always have interesting stuff going on. Appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next one. Probably take a peek at this guy here and figure out what the heck to do with it.